For our latest rail fan trip, we're heading north to Bellevue, Ohio. Don't expect to see much on your way, though. This was my view for the last hour of the three-hour ride from Cincinnati. The city's about halfway between Cleveland and Toledo. It's been a railroad town for more than 150 years. We'll start our day with this local, just an SD40-2 and a covered hopper. 63G clear, doing connection. One left. Here you can see part of the railway museum in town. We'll get to that in just a bit. The Nickel Plate Road ran through Bellevue from 1882 until 1964 when it merged with the Norfolk and Western Railway. Currently, five Norfolk Southern lines converge here. With all that rail history, it's no surprise the town is home to the Mad River and Nickel Plate Road Museum. It opened in 1976, so make sure to plan some time to walk around. Even if it's closed due to a pandemic, there's still plenty to look at and it's all in very good condition. Several of the cars and engines have placards with their history. There's also a small covered area, but be careful because the trains will sneak up on you. 
Northeast of town, we find the Norfolk Southern Mormon Yard. At five and a half miles long, it's the railroad's largest yard and second largest in North America, only behind Union Pacific's North Platte Yard in Nebraska. The company renamed the yard after former NS CEO and President Charles Wick Mormon. The yard was originally opened by the Norfolk and Western Railway in 1966. NS spent $160 million to double the size of the yard in 2015. It built 38 new classification tracks, bringing the number up to 80. The yard went from being able to handle 1,800 cars a day to as many as 3,600. It includes two hum tracks and engine and car repair shops. There's just one problem, and you've probably already noticed. The yard's pretty much empty. In June, Norfolk Southern announced it was stopping all hump operations at the yard and flat switching would take its place. It also shifted some operations to other facilities. Enough about the yard though, let's get back to the trains. You should see plenty while you're here. Are there any drivers available over? Richard, 13Q, need some assistance west end of A-10. Okay, okay.
These two Wheeling and Lake Erie trains never moved while I was there. I'm glad I was able to get video of the engines though. I love the Rio Grande paint scheme. Next the tracks you'll find this rail park. It was donated by Stephen Kemper who owned Kemper Iron and Metal. The viewing platform is part of the museum and is open 24 hours a day. It's across from the Bellevue Tower. The tower is closed but Norfolk Southern still uses it for maintenance of way crews. Thank you. 
This was the only foreign power I saw all day, a Canadian National ES44AC, and then this BC Rail Dash 840 cm It's got a full width cowl body and uses a Canada specific nose and windshield configuration.
pulling the rest of the two, it won't bother you. You can just shove it. You can leave it out east over. does it. Bellevue's well worth a drive and spending a day in the area. I hope to go back once the museum opens again. For our next trip, we're heading to Louisville, Kentucky. We'll see several bridges and another yard. Until then, have a great day.